Greetings everyone, this is Lodrik again and this is the game Warn the Pacific in West Edition in the match Dojo against Lodrik and today we will check uh, turn number 43 means is uh, yeah, the battle of uh, 1st of March and 2nd of March So you can see that I continue the occupation of the smaller Philippines island and bases. Sometimes active by landing units like here. Sometimes the uh, bases are automatically switching. Here also north of Darwin. Uh, everywhere small block forces with low attack value. But it is enough to uh, occupy all this normally not so important side bases. I would always focus my units uh, on the important bases and really only use uh, like support units uh, to take care of the rest. This is now. Uh, this uh, ongoing convoy battle I would say I try to bring in the 14th and 16th army to Java and Dojo have here I don't know maybe half dozen submarines operating in this area and I think the next days uh, will be uh, yeah, uh, his attempt will be try to intercept my convoys and I have to the task to um, yeah, protect, of course, firstly my my troop transport ships and uh, push him back and uh, maybe hurt or even sunk sink his uh, submarines. Uh, so far, all his damaged submarines have a very short way back here to Soabaya. So if we don't get an instant kill they will be likely simply go back to Soabaya and here's a shipyard that is also why it's important normally for me to take Soabaya first because once we take the shipyard it's very unlikely for the allied player to uh, repair major damage he can still maybe repair all uh, minor damage in the port but major damage normally need a, need a shipyard so we can see here this was not so not really a big effective um, uh, anti-submarine activity but it's enough the main purpose is bring my army to java intact this is really the main purpose and if we can get rid of some submarines or force them to return to port it's nice to have Okay, the night is over and like the turn before, not too much activity. This, I think this next coming 2-3 turns will be mm, more moving the parts and not fighting too much. But at least we have some submarine activity and compared to Dojo submarines, the Japanese submarines have a high skilled motivated uh, uh, captains and crews so even uh, even if we have uh, not the best odds here this is here New Zealand Auckland west east of Auckland we intercept here some I don't know if it's a convoy but uh, looks like a cargo convoy yeah. 
but uh, our submarine show it, I think it's not really it's a normally you can see the original our submarine was here looking but uh, it is, was more or less like an emergency attack from our submarine I think our submarine would normally attack the cargo ships but then the AVB, AVD and the destroyer maybe detect the submarine because they make normally an anti-submarine attack and then our submarine more or less say okay make emergency attack this is this two torpedoes if you see this two or three bases like something like a before the submarine dive deep often they try to launch two torpedoes and in this case we make a hit and uh, this will normally be enough to take this AVD out and we hear the sinking sound so normally you can confirm yeah now the other side this Dutch uh, submarines of course fail I mean the submarine the Dutch are maybe not bad with their submarines but our Japanese destroyers are superb and uh, like our submarine crews our destroyer crews also know what they are doing they have enough training and this is now the opposite you can see here this was also he tried to attack maybe the cargo and the troop transport but uh, the destroyer detects them and then the submarine tried to make this emergency attack but in this case he failed most of the time this kind of attacks fail but we also fail to hunt down the submarine so we will fight another day and another day is not another day it's the same day but uh, This time at least we find the submarine and we... Ah, uh, six hits is okay. It will make... Oh, this is maybe enough damage to force the submarine to return, but... Ah, uh, it's maybe at the edge. The submarine can maybe try to stay here a little longer. We will see about how Dojo will react to this. And remember, the main task is to bring the army safe from one port to the next port. These are not really uh, submarine um, hunter forces. They are only um, convoy escort duty. So we can see uh, many American submarines uh, all around of uh, Rabul. I mean, for sure, why not? Maybe Dojo still try to get a hit on my first carrier fleet. And if we would have success with this, why not? I mean, to cripple a fleet carrier will lower the pressure the Japanese can uh, hold on the Americans. But so far, the Allied uh, sub uh, submarine fleet was not very successful, I would say, compared to the Japanese completely failure. But uh, at least do the try. So far, I never really see any surface engagement of. I mean, do do not try to use surface. Uh, task forces to disturb my shipping so far he play very safe and only use submarines and not even he don't even try to uh, mess up with my convoy around Japan Taiwan Philippines or something like this most of his submarines are always near to his own bases so that if he gets hit he can always return to a port and maybe repair the submarine I think the most important is for, it doesn't matter if you are Japanese or the Allied, you must have a strategy and a tactic and then, uh, of course you can change this tactic, but I would not always change too, too frequently. So if you want to play it aggressive, then play it aggressive. But of course, this will automatically mean that you will have a high risk to lose much more. And uh, if you want, uh, with the allies, if you want to uh, pull back like Dojo do, he plays a safe card. Then he play it. 
safe. And this will mean that maybe he will lose in the early months more stuff. But around June, July, he have also the opportunity to strike much faster hard back. So, but if your allies try to push back early on, they can have success and maybe mess up with the Japanese uh, invasion plan uh, very critically. I would say, I mean, this happens maybe like in the game with THC. There is uh, the whole Japanese uh, invasion plan a little... Oh, it is a little, mm, I would say at least not very successful. Some places, yeah, yeah, because it's not only you can take here a lot of stuff on the map, but you must hold your stuff with the Japanese at, to the first of 1943. So even if the Japan take everything and or nearly everything in in summer of 42, if you cannot maintenance this stuff. Then the allies still have four, three, or four or five months to take back what is maybe most critical. So, yeah, you can rush and take a lot of stuff, but the only to conquer stuff will not uh, let you win this game. So you can see that. Uh, uh, the amount of task forces around Java is now um, increasing. And this is my typical uh, from land base for Bull. This has this long range navy bombers. And uh, because uh, Dojo not uh, really bring here any surface task forces, so the second, normally all of these bombers have the primary task search and hunt enemy task forces and the navy's task forces but because there is nothing then they always automatically go to the uh, second goal of the day and this is a bombardment of land units and I choose I give them the order if you find no enemy ships then they take more speed and forces so not with much success but this is uh, I think mostly based on uh, the terrain on the enemy fort level. Yeah. Dojo have you some uh, of his uh, patrol planes or scout planes I think they are scout planes not patrol planes and uh, the Japanese uh, I mean compared to the Japanese say these guys can carry 250 pound so uh, let's say this is like 100 kilo the Japanese uh, scout planes they can carry maximum 60 kilo so but of course yeah I think the Japanese they carry four times 60 kilo and these guys carry twice 250 uh, pound bombs. So the total weight or payload is maybe the same, but the Japanese have uh, are more likely to hit something, but if they hit is only small damage. And these bombs have more impact if they can hit. And in this case, uh, I mean, I mean the Americans, I mean, they don't really know what they are doing, so they try to attack, but they fail miserably again. This is uh, 
Uh, Navy guard units trying to, I mean, now we take short lens. I mean, at least we landing or in short lens. I make simply the decision to take first these two bases and not rush the units directly to Rabul. And this is only a bombardment. Uh, because my scout information told me more or less that the numbers of the soldiers are very equal and you can see this 14,000 to 14,000. Also the attack value is uh, I have only a very small advantage and this is simply f too less to really attack something. I mean, maybe it's possible to attack for me and grind uh, down Dojo's uh, Chinese forces, but at the same time I take uh, maybe Dojo's forces out, also this uh, Japanese division will bleed out. And I simply don't want places uh, kind of uh, dry, um, bleed dry or bleed, uh, bleed white stuff. I want a decisive, uh, short battle with a clear victory on my side. So I try to avoid anything what uh, I will not win easily. I always try to manage in advance that I already be in a position to have a short, fast victory. Uh, for this you need simply enough recon information and uh, to organize stuff already far in the yeah, in the past to be successful in the future. So this is like uh, my second Mongolian army. I have one Mongolian army here in Nilangshou and this is now the second one. And the first Mongolian army with a headquarter, this one is uh, without headquarter because there is only one Mongolian headquarter. Is it something like a block force to pressure Dojo to keep forces here in the source so that my second Mongolian army can here uh, starting the long walk up now this is a small road now we take here the base and then I can use this army go up and try to take the capital of the inner Mongolian uh, and uh, capture all these bases so we can see with ease we destroy here this uh, Chinese garrison and not that there's really much left. 11th Chinese Corp and some other stuff. So but they're all retreating, nothing is destroyed but most of the units are destroyed again. So the Chinese are already broken and this units will never stop me more. So if we, Dojo don't have anything here in the north to try to help this unit to hold the line somewhere I will normally walk you now slowly up and take one base after the next base. At the same time I pressure Dojo here in the source so he can normally not push here in the north with his units. I mean he can try to do this but at the same time I control Sian so it will be a tough situation for Dojo now. Uh. We will see. China will be is it always a very very slow war, but it's also important if the Japanese can uh, win the war in China, it's already um, very tough for the Americans or for the Allies to take it back. So and this is only some picking here north of Darwin again. It's only something like uh, a. Yeah. The base is not really matters, but uh, I won't have uh, them under control that I know there's no ally units more hiding. Hopefully. This is now taking Tulagi. But Dojo don't rush anything up here. I mean, why he would try this? I mean, he can try to push or rush here some units, but... Uh, my scout planes told me there's nothing in this base and uh, I think Dojo will try maybe to hold uh, Luganville. We will see. And this is also, this is a industry center source in the Philippines. Normally in the southern uh, islands of uh, the Philippines there are only resources, nothing really critical, super important, but uh, this base, I think I have also light industry, so I pick it to take it and uh, why not. And uh, yeah. This is now the slow advance in Java. I first cross here to simply cut Java in two pieces. 
So I know we have now East, Java, Dutch, and... So, and uh, now we take the base, there was nothing left already, and uh, now we split Java into pieces, East Java and West uh, Java, Dutch forces, so uh, for me, this, my scout information told me that more or less uh, in uh, Batavia and in Sorabaya, the Dutch forces are equally, more or less the same. But for me, Sorabaya would always be the number one priority, simply because of the shipyard. And uh, Sorabaya is normally the most important uh, base to uh, maintenance and support any Navy campaign against West of Australia. If you want to operate uh, submarine fleet or surface fleets uh, against Perth, Perth, uh, Perth and uh, Kapshat, this kind of uh, supply line, then I would say you can use Singapore, but it's uh, more far away. It simply will always consume more fuel, and uh, Sorabaya is more nearby. So why not take Sorabaya if possible? You can still see that the Japanese uh, forces are all in the good 50s the maximum I think this unit can have 62 like this so we are little maybe we lost 5% of our attack value and uh, Dojo's forces are normally not so strong but uh, the terrain the fort level will still make it a little tough for me to take this so Dojo makes the decision to yeah, makes this kind of bombardments. Maybe he can make a let, let, uh, lucky hit, but in this case, uh, he failed. I mean, we lost one gun and a little disabled squads, but that is okay. One more far away, I will get reinforcements. And with the additional forces, I can finally maybe take Port Mosby. Good, so the day is over. It was more a submarine warfare battle and picking up many small bases. No big air battle, no navy engagement. But still here, the amount of uh, submarines are everywhere here. So Dojo really try to hmm, pick up my ships. But, uh, if I know where the enemy submarines, it's more easy for me to avoid this. Okay. This is our glorious, uh, hard-working Japanese uh, warrior here in the east of uh, New Zealand. And this time we pick up a cargo ship. Not bad. Our submarines maybe attack not too much, but they are successful. Okay, second one. Okay, two torpedoes are normally always enough for a cargo ship. Now we make every three torpedo hits. So, two additional torpedo hits, now this cargo ship is really dead. Yeah, it's sinking. Yeah, this happened if the Americans uh, try to mess up with uh, the glorious Japanese Empire. Of course, they will fail and pay now the price in blood. One day they will. One day the arrogant American president will ask for peace. In this case, of course, Dojo must ask for peace.
Maybe not today, but the day will come. Ah, again no navy engagement. Ah, oh, pity pity. So we really detect not all, but many of this uh, submarines. But uh, I use my scouts more or less for navy search. So they detect the submarines, but they not really often try to attack this. Uh, they only give me the position of the submarine and say, okay, fine. If you really want hunt submarines, you must go for this uh, special hunt uh, anti-submarine uh, air missions. But this is other skill and most of my pilots are not trained for them. So my carriers are back to Buna, even if it's not very successful, I try to keep the pressure on Port Moresby now these days, because it's not more long, 5 days, maybe 6-7 days, the additional forces will arrive, so, oops, ah, now we will never make really much damage, but it's, uh, the main purpose is simply keep the fatigue of these units high. Or the moral, moral law, something like this. And on the other hand, uh, this uh, the carrier air wings, they also build up a lot of uh, uh, land attack knowledge now. N normally, all these carrier air wings, they don't really are very good for land strikes. But because I bombard so often Port Mosby with my carriers now, they get they're getting some skill points. So in the future maybe I can use them a little more if with higher efficiency. But I still think it's a little waste. Uh, carrier or navy air wings and force are better for really main purpose is uh, fight with enemy air force and. Uh, sink enemy ships, not so much to attack the land units. At least in this game, the, the way how the game model this kind of air attacks, it's uh, not very... You hear this is okay, uh, but uh, Navy fighters, Navy bombers are not really so good for this. Now again, second attempt, second time they fail, go back to school. Maybe another day Dojo will be uh, successful, but looks like today he don't want, or he cannot. Now afternoon. Yeah. yeah, this is out of Singapore, again, the same similar to Rabul. The units are normally, the main purpose is normally attack enemy surface task forces but Dojo don't want come so the second task is always attack uh, land forces. Oh, yeah, nothing really crazy here. Only a little damage here, a little damage there. Oh, yeah. But you can see that there's a uh, Long time already, no enemy flag. So all damage to our air wings are only purely landing accidents or 
take off leg accidents, nothing really related to uh, the ground forces. They are long term out of supplies, so this stuff is simply only a pilot accident. Oh yeah, we disabled slowly some stuff. Here was still some flak, but uh, not the Chinese flak can do something. We come here in 8000, so only the really big uh, flak guns can uh, attack this uh, air wings. Uh, and this is simply not enough. Uh, but, I mean, this is only 15 bombers. Okay, okay. So these guys are aggressive. At least you can tell that they, or say that they they trying really hard to do something. But uh, I mean, three airplanes, two bombs each, so six bombs for one cargo ship, and they coming out of six thousand feet. So, and this is because no dive attack, so it's a horizontal attack, possible to hit, but. Not today, especially with this uh, bad weather and maybe low skills. Okay, so last time already Dojo tried to attack the port here and uh, had a bloody nose. And uh, but Dojo is Dojo, and uh, maybe Dojo don't like the Dutch. I don't know, but uh, he really don't care the Dutch Air Force much. And this I can say. So now he coming here with bomber. Twin bomber units and no escort because he lost already his Dutch air wings, uh, fighter wings, long time ago. So the zeros normally first kill the enemy Dutch fighters, and now the zeros killing the Dutch bombers. So, I mean, you can say these are the flying Dutch, but they are not more flying very long time. So now there is a burning Dutch. And the dying Dutch. And this is a, uh, I mean, at the end, uh, I don't expect that this bombers can survive this. So we can skip this and say, okay, they're giving up. At some point, the bombers they realize uh, it's maybe not the best idea to uh, try to attack uh, if there's an uh, enemy zero fighters. And uh, official, we kill now three. Later, we will see. The intelligent report, maybe a little more kills. More scout information, more pictures. Always try to keep the detection level high and uh, so that I know what is Dojo moving, how many units are moving and uh, uh, that I can always uh, adjust my strategy. At the end, I mean, I only adjust my strategy. I don't really change my strategy. Also, this is now the bombardment of a battleship fleet, yeah. Because uh, my, my attack value is simply compared to dojos are not really high enough. I normally need at least a uh, double the attack value advantage to really uh, try to take the base or so I bomb use a lot of air force to bombard I use a lot of battleships and heavy cruisers to bombard and uh, you can see uh, nothing really crazy the base itself is of course totally destroyed but doesn't matter so uh, yeah, not so successful but at least something And this is maybe the last battle for today. Again, uh, anti-submarine. So we're using here now. This is a, a deep water sub hunter. And I think this is again a Dutch submarine and uh, five hits. So he must normally return to Palm Bank or uh, Palm Bank or 
we can also try to return to Rangoon, but hard for him. He must make a decision. Five hits. Maybe we'll force him to return. Picking up more bases. First here in the north. Now here in the south. So. so it was this. This turn was more based on submarine warfare. And of course, a little air battle here. So, yeah. So it let this tells me more or less that uh, I can I have no hope to really take this base. So I have something. This is enough. I cannot uh, use much bombardment attacks because this is not a uh, will not give me any advantage here. But I also cannot normally take the base or I will bleed out my division, so I have to wait for reinforcements. Um, so my bombardment and I mean air bombardment and short bombardment will lower Dojo's attack value, but uh, this bombardment uh, more or less uh, lower my attack value, so both are suffering, but uh, the question is. Uh, who gets the advantage? Normally I have the possibility to bring additional forces and sooner or later they will arrive. If Dojo can bring something, I don't believe. I don't think that Dojo will risk anything to save his Australian units. He is a... Uh, he lets them die to uh, buy some time maybe. So, means we arrive now at March the 3rd, 42. Not super crazy active day, so we can see that uh, Dojo lost 6 air planes in the, yeah, in the air battles. I lost the one by flag, and operation losses are equally 3 to 2, so uh, just so so. So all of this uh, was Dutch bombers, normal medium bombers, twin engine, uh, Sonia, operation loss. This is uh, Ida by flag. Okay. And Catalina is down. This is always good. And the rest is just so so. Nothing really. Dojo lost nine air planes. I lost three. Hmm, it's okay. But really, nothing really matters. So, ship sunk, last turn, the Japanese lost nothing, like always, mostly, and official, I mean this is always official, with fog of war, so Dojo lost his AVD, so this is a tender, the, I mean, I don't know really, I don't think that the Japanese have this kind of ships, but this is like a, so this is destroyer, but uh, to bring additional um, AV power to a base. So you can maintain some uh, float planes. Everything what is uh, with uh, yeah, float planes and patrol aircraft, you can give additional AV power. But you cannot see how much AV power here. But I think like 8 or 12, something like this. It's maybe okay if you want to use some bases far in the Pacific and you don't want to bring a, air, a base force somewhere. I don't really use this kind of ships too much. Well, but maybe later on. At least there's uh, six points for us. It's okay. The cargo ship was a standard cargo ship. Nine points. Nothing crazy. Standard. Uh, lower standard, but... Uh, Four and a, or nearly 5,000 ton uh, cargo capacity, okay, I'll take it. And we also got rid official by a Dutch submarine. And uh, this has this, uh, 
I think uh, more long range submarines. 10,000? Mm. I think there's also other one with more range, but uh, at least it's a medium. 10,000 is okay. 1,000 ton tonnage, so it's already a bigger submarine. You can see a victory value of 11. Mm. Not bad. But nothing really important. So. In China, you can see here that uh, 4 units, 25,000 guys, and uh, I have here 8,000 soldiers, so in the half of this 25,000, so Dojo maybe have something like 10, 11,000 Chinese. Uh, not enough. Simply not enough. Maybe you can catch here up. I have here my 23rd army. Normally I try to yeah, yeah get rid of this uh, last units here and then I will normally bring down the 23rd army and uh, support here the Tekken Wushu. At the same time we try to intercept this uh, 4 5000 guys. Uh, not more much left but okay. Here is 3 units but no additional information. Important is that uh, these are 28 units so this is all of this uh, big double army is trapped here still and Dojo don't know how to escape and he moving sometimes west sometimes uh, north west and sometimes he wait and do nothing if waiting and do nothing the best way I don't know maybe one day he try to come out but where Dojo must make decision if he goes south west or north west or turn around and try to attack let Dojo Dojo must see so and here is this. Uh, this is his first Mongolian army with a headquarter, only three hundred attack value, so not too much. But it's forced him to keep here units, and you can see here twelve units. Whatever it is, twelve units means there is already a lot, and uh, well, and we take here the base. Not really important something here, but uh, some additional resources. And I will now walk here slowly up to take uh, the next bases. 20 points here, 60 points, 60 points, 20 points, and here is this last one also 20. But uh, this is of course a very, I'm not sure if I really go for this base. Maybe only to finish this, because this is really the last base here, very far away. If we take all these bases, then uh, I know there's nothing happened. So long the Soviets not enter the war, I can say... Fine. I mean, but the industry support is also not crazy here. So, this base is only this uh, little 20 resources, uh, nearly nothing. Uomushi is a uh, uh, oil and refinery and a little more resources. So, this is okay and little light industry, but the rest is uh, only points. I mean, points are okay, but good so I normally have to wait what Dojo is doing and if Dojo not is acting then I will drive my force here north and take the three bases so we take at least the first hex but we are still on the way so you can see moving 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 so one, two, turn, three, four. So at around 15th of March, we maybe arrive here. So wait a little longer. Here we have some enemy submarines looking in the water and we try to get rid of them. Uh, but not easy. So we consume a lot of ammo, but uh, Maybe, maybe. I mean, we, at least we can damage the submarines. So we're getting a little low on uh, on supplies, and I think uh, uh, this is a little related to this heavy uh, commitment uh, for the Japanese industry. I I choose more or less to invest more my supplies in uh, industry and additional factories and have a later on a more easy task 
to maintenance this uh, war. If you don't, the other option is that you more or less say you don't invest too much in industry and you let the, all the supplies uh, yeah, directly burn in war effort. But uh, I mean, I try to balance this. I more or less 50% of my supplies I use for upgrade industry and repair industry and A&D stuff and all others, everything that is related to industry. And the other 50% of my supplies are going for the army and navy. Uh, but uh, now at the beginning of March, I see the, the yeah, upcoming limitation of the uh, limited Japanese industry output. Japan simply don't produce normally enough supplies to maintenance all of this navy and army uh, ongoing war. So. This is why I reduce my air activity in China and I have to call my units back to port and oh, I mean I not only repair the ships I also must wait that I did get additional supplies here. So I I bring here fuel for my navy but I also need uh, supplies and uh, because Singapore alone will not produce ever enough supplies to maintenance all of this stuff. <coughs> I also have still the shipyard to repair. <coughs> so, you can see, pick some bases, but uh, uh, not enough. Uh, we take here the base, and you can see this is what I mean. Here's some light industry, some resources, manpower. Manpower is really what the Japanese never need. But the uh, light industry and resources are never bad. Take them if you can. But don't repair them. And the army here in uh, Java is slowly increasing. So we have now addition already. 1100 attack value already arrived here. But we are still unloading stuff. And this is his AMC. We get the 500 pound bomber. That is okay. We unloading and then we can uh, repair the ship. Here's additional forces, so we are still unloading, 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 unloading. I only sent out my navy guard units already to, yeah, uh, take the frontline bases already, so that my uh, main army can simply walk directly to Saw by and don't must stop somewhere. So I use this uh, navy uh, navy guard units to scout ahead. Take everything what is uh, without defense and uh, let my main army really take care of every real battle. And the Navy Guard units only conquer stuff uh, uh, what is uh, empty and easy picking. Here in Osthaven we also arrive here and uh, I think but we are also unloading still. Unloading, 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 unloading. This needs a little longer because Osthaven is simply a... Uh, a smaller port we cannot dock here and we don't have the additional navy support or something like this so yeah. but uh, so far we have uh, 650 attack value hmm. but more is coming good so you can see picking here this is a stronger unit and this is his block forces. Similar to here. Here is also only a block forces so far. But uh, we take our bomb and uh, these units are still in resting because they are a little low on attack value. So I let them rest a little. Then I will move them to the north and then take here also the last, uh, this, uh, last Dutch forces. And bases. Here you can see the amount of submarines. Submarine here, and you can see these are three submarines. Two here, two at least, more, two here, one, one, and these are four. Ah. So many submarines. And my, yeah, this is a the battleships, they always can only make one uh, 
one short bombardment and then you're nearly running out of ammunition. And this 10% uh, roughly of the ammunition the ships always try to keep for emergency battles. So I would never really completely dry out the ammunition, always try to go back and then we arm. Um, not that these two shells will do anything more. And if you ever hit the enemy task force and have no ammunition, like we had long time ago in this uh, heavy battle east of Cylon and uh, my heavy cruisers normally fight uh, up to the end, but they, if you have three or four engagements, you there is a day or a moment you're running out of ammunition and uh, this last battle simply really was uh, unlucky for me. But uh, at least the uh, heavy cruisers survived. They are still here in... Uh, oh, not here. Where is my heavy cruisers now? I don't remember. I thought I had them here and... Ah, maybe they just arrived. Ah, yeah. I call them back from, I think, I don't know, I had some Victoria, victory point, Victoria point. Somewhere here I had my cruiser formation. These are the two heavy cruisers that had this heavy engagement with this far superior uh, ally task force. But somehow the Japanese still win the battle and at least uh, damage many of the Dojo's light cruisers, heavy cruisers. And we only lost one destroyer, but I think, I think many cargo ships and also some troop jump support but you can see they are still at least one of this I mean this one is still okay but I will normally uh, keep them here I can dispense them here uh, Jotran is a little more safe I don't want to keep them here and have a unlucky situation so Jotran is okay I have your navy scout so normally nothing can attack here it's also a port of four so there's no Submarine attack possible because it's a protected port and uh, here it's more easy to uh, repair the ships a little more so I can Tell them here you can see it's 94 days in the port when then I let them Stand down then it's only 72 days, but we cannot fix this major damage but we can go to Repair ship then we can fix everything, but it's 114 days and uh so it's maybe better, so not always a repair ship is better. Uh, because if you do, the repair ship will also boost the normal repair um, ability of the port. If you, so uh, maybe keep it like this, depending on, uh, because it makes no sense normally to go here for all full repair, but wait uh, nearly 30 days more, 40 days more. So I would say it is better to have here only this port side and repair uh, and forget this major damage because this you can also fix in the bigger uh, uh, shipyard later. And as a cruiser stand down is okay. If you go here for, oops, here you can go but 61 days of, better this I think, it's still better. But it's always depending uh, where you are, what is the size of the port, you can uh, check around. Goody. I don't know if there's much more I can say now, because we don't have big, uh, really important battles so far. I think the next real big battle will be here in Suobaya. It's a question of uh, how many forces uh, Dojo have here, if he can stop my army, and... Uh, how lucky I will be to take Suabaya, the base, because uh, in Singapore it was very unlucky because the whole base burned down and I had to rebuild everything and this cost me at least one week, maybe even more time. So if the same happened in Suabaya, then I will also have a, a slowdown situation. But if I can take Suabaya very intact without much damage, then it's more easy for me to Maintenance my fleet and maybe bring early on uh, additional forces uh, to Perth Because the submarines never will be enough to really cripple uh, The supply lines of the Allies so submarines are okay to mess up with something and They will hurt 
but to really stop uh, supply lines and big, uh, give a, a big blow to Dojo, I think I must bring here heavy cruisers or battleships even. Yeah. So I think this is all, not more to say. I took a uh, short lens to Lagi, I'm ready to reload my units and then uh, bring them to Port Moresby. But I, I, because he has so many submarines, I have here maybe I need additional forces and maybe I will let the task forces meet here somewhere in the open sea and then I can move uh, directly in. And the battleships have to return to base. Rearm and then maybe make a final attack. So maybe I will send my battleships back, rearm, then come out. At the same time, I take my additional task forces and then I will attack Port Moresby. Then I lend these two additional Navy Guard units and then it's time to strike. Goody. This is first all for today. Thank you all. See you again. Take care. Bye-bye.